Hello and welcome to section 2 of this complete NestJS course. In this section, we are going to learn all about pipes as well as dependency injection in NestJS. And let's start this section by understanding what are pipes in NestJS and where do we use it. And then in the next lecture, we will learn how to use pipes in our NestJS application. So what are pipes? Pipes in NestJS are basically functions that transforms or validate the data which comes with the request before it reaches the controller method. So a pipe is a function which gets executed before the controller. So before a request reaches the controller, before that the request first goes through a pipe. Okay, and what is the function of pipe? It basically transforms or validates the data which is coming with the request. So in our previous lectures, we have learned that with the request, we can also pass some data to the server using route parameter or query string or the request body. So whatever data we are sending with the request, we can validate that data or we can transform that data using pipes before it reaches the controller for its processing. Okay, so pipes are used to clean, sanitize or convert data to a specific format, ensuring that the data received by the controller is in a suitable state for further processing. All right, so the request data which the controller will receive, it will be sanitized or it will be transformed by the pipe before it reaches the controller. Now, what do we use a pipe for? We can use a pipe for data validation. So pipes can validate incoming data to ensure it adheres to a specific requirements such as the data types or the length or the format. And this helps prevents errors and improves data quality. Then we can also use pipe for data transformation. Pipe can transform data into a different format or structure, making it more suitable for the controller's logic. For example, you can use pipes to pass JSON string, convert data types or format dates. Then we can also use pipe for data sanitization. Pipes can sanitize data to remove potentially harmful content such as HTML tags or malicious scripts. And this helps protect your application from security vulnerabilities. So let's try to understand how a pipe validates or transforms data before it reaches the controller. So here we have an incoming request. We are making a request to root URL slash user slash 101. This 101 is the ID of the user. Now this ID should be a numeric value and its value can change. Basically this 101 is the route parameter. It is the dynamic part of this URL which can change. So before this request reaches the controller, there are many layers which a request has to pass before it reaches the controller. Now we will talk about these other layers later. One of the layers is this pipes. So before a request reaches the controller, before that it has to go through pipes. And what is the use of pipe? The pipe is used to validate or transform the request data. Now, when we are sending this request here, in this request, we have this ID 101, which is a route parameter. Now, this ID, when we will read it from our NestJS application, it will be read as a string because route parameters are string. But the ID of the user will be a numeric value. Okay, so we can use this pipe here to convert this string value to a numeric value before it reaches the controller. In this way, this pipe is doing the data transformation. It is transforming a string value to a numeric value. Because in the controller, we are expecting a numeric ID. We are not expecting ID as a string value. We are expecting ID to be a numeric value. But when we read the ID from the route parameter, it is read as a string. Right. So this pipe will take care of converting that string ID to a numeric type before the request reaches the controller. So this is one use of pipes. Here we are transforming a string value into a number type. Now if this value, if this 101, if it is not a numeric value, let's say we are passing ABC as the ID value. In that case, 
this ABC cannot be converted to a number type. Right? So, in this case, when the request will reach to this pipe, it will try to convert this string value to number type. Now, this string value cannot be converted to number type. So, in that case, what this pipe will do is, it will immediately throw an exception. And from the pipe itself, a response will be sent back to the client with the response status code as bad request. So in that case, the request will not even reach to the controller. The request will reach the pipe. The pipe will try to convert this string value to number type. It will not be able to convert it to number type. So from here itself, an exception will be thrown and a response will be sent back to the client with the message bad request. Okay, let's take another example. So in this example, we are making a request to root URL slash users. And in that URL, we also have two query strings, this limit, which is set to 30 and this page, which is set to three. So again, as we have learned, the query string will be read as a string value. So in this example, we might want to have two pipes. The first pipe will be responsible for converting these string values to number types. So the string 30 will be converted to number 30 and the string 3 will be converted to number 3 by a pipe and then the request will be passed to the controller. Okay, but if the user is making a request to root URL slash users and he's not specifying the limit and page query string, in that case, we don't want to get a list of all the users. Since we want to implement pagination here, if the user has not specified limit and page, so here in this example, the page three will be displayed with 30 users. This is what this query string means. But if the user has not specified the limit and the page, in that case, we don't want to display all the users in a single page. Instead, in that case, we want to set some default limit and page. And that we can do with another pipe. So for that, we can have another pipe in this layer and that pipe will be responsible for setting a default limit value and a default page value if the limit and page query string is not specified in the URL. So there also we can make use of a pipe. Okay, so remember that we use pipes to validate or transform the request data before the request reaches the controller. Now in Nest.js, we have some built-in pipes and we can also create our own custom pipe. So let's go to the documentation of Nest.js. So if you go to docs.nestjs.com, let me actually go there. It will take you to this page. So this is the introduction page. Now from here, if you want to learn about pipes in the overview section, you will see this pipes link. Click on that and it will take to the documentation of pipes. And here you can see that a pipe is nothing but a TypeScript class which is decorated with at injectable decorator and which implements this pipe transform interface. So when we will create our custom pipe, that time we will understand this statement. But for now, if I scroll down, you will see that in Nest.js, we have these nine built-in pipes. We have this validation pipe, parse int pipe, parse float pipe, parse bool pipe, parse array pipe and other pipes. So in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's use some of these built-in pipes practically and understand their use. And after that, we will also create our own custom pipe. This is all from this lecture. If you have any question, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.